Trent, hard to win a game with 28% of the territory, so to fight back hard in the second half, finish that close with 28% territory, are you happy with the effort? Yeah. Yeah, I'm happy with the effort. You know, I don't care about the 28% territory. We, um, the boys showed a lot of ticker. We felt like we dominated the physical battle in the game. Um, and we're really disappointed to lose. Are you disappointed with that decision before half-time, having defended your line heroically and seemed to keep them out, then cop a penalty that led to the kick-out try? Would you like to comment on that? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's just... You're talking about the tackle where Sammy Beryl yes. tackled and he fell over and yes. he fell on his front? Yeah, that. I mean, that's just a horrible decision. You know, that, we shouldn't let a try in on the end of it. That's not the... But, I mean, there were so many poor decisions tonight. We had... Same referee last game, and it was like 30 odd offsides, you know, and it was a 3 1 penalty count. And it was like, well, this is normal. And then, you know, every opportunity, it was, you know, Sammy Beryl's one. Um, you know, we also had obviously the, the, the sin bidding, which was, you know, that was, we're not playing rugby union. You either stop the game, send him off, uh, send him to the bin there. You don't give them opportunities. And then the, the offsides on the try line. It was just give, keep giving an opportunity. That was the that was the field position. You know the offsides on both sides. You know you can call Yo, you can call Cleary, constantly. But if you don't if you don't um, penalise, then you know you end up with 28% possession. You know if it was just it wasn't a good enough performance tonight. You know the Nat Butcher one at the end there. You know that they're, they're just. They're, they're big decisions that you know you can't get wrong, um, and it wasn't good enough. You know we we were we were really strong tonight, um, and we shouldn't have let some of the tries in that we did. You know we should still defend them, but I thought we won the physical battle. But um, obviously there was sort of issues there um, with our team and not the other team. James, you did uh, a lot of talking with the referee today. Was that one of the more frustrating games that you've captained in your career? Yeah, it was. It was frustrating. I think just. I feel like, we, as Robert said, we, de we were defending our line so well and then we just get a penalty against us. So it was it was frustrating that um, we just kept giving them possession through those penalties and we weren't getting anything back. So there wasn't much yeah, wasn't much explanation for it. It was just, just kept getting penalties against us. So, yeah, it was, it was frustrating. I think you said to Jerry that it felt like you'd been caught offside ten times in a row there. Yeah, second half. it felt like because we yeah we defend a line six six tackles and then we get a penalty and that happened maybe not ten but three or four in a row just it just kept them in the game we, we I felt like our D, D was so good and then we just it's hard to defend three four sets in a row let alone against the, the best team in the comp so yeah it was frustrating. Rob, I hate ref bashing, but they did say it on commentary that the referee to dictate this result tonight they wanted the players to sort of put on the entertainment. But you're in that position now where every win is going to count towards the eight. Yeah, sure. Look, I, I, I don't, you know, I said my piece on that. It wasn't a good enough performance um, from him, but, you know, that's, you know, uh, you, you still should be in a position um, that's, it's not going to happen in Roosters' colours. It's just, it's, you know, that's not bias. That's a fact that you're not going to get those opportunities. So, um, we still needed to be in a position to, to turn that around. There were some opportunities in that second half. I think we had an error in midfield um, when we were coming out of our own end. Um, there was a couple of sets where we should have just driven a little bit more and, and kicked into sort of inside their 20, which would have relieved some of that, that, um, that territory battle. Um, and we just missed that opportunity at 18-14, you know, to, or even at 20 to 18 there. Just to just to drive it home a bit there, and then um, we had a couple of opportunities on the line, and and we didn't we didn't get one. So um, you know, I was really proud of the guys tonight. Like I was really proud of the way that um, they came back from the rep weekend, you know, and and from all different countries and and states, and they attacked the game. And you know, that, there's really sad dressing room there because they put a lot of effort in and they know how hard they worked and they know what kind of a team they were. Um, but yeah, we've got, um, we've got to go and take a breath. These guys are going to go and play some state of origin. We get the bye and we're going to come back and do some work.
Yeah, I, I didn't even I didn't see the hit. You guys might have seen it. We I didn't go back to have a look at it. I don't think even he knew. Was it from the tackle on? The one of the trying maybe on, his on um, and his front. Yeah. No, no, he hit him with a good shot, and then they scored after that. And then he got pulled off after that. So uh, I yeah, I, I didn't. It was a yeah okay. I, I yeah. He, he didn't even know why. He's fine. Nothing happened, and he got taken off in a pretty critical period to, to go after a game. Robert, can you comment on Siwa's performance? I'm thinking about 160 metres in the try in the first 56. That's a huge effort from a guy like him. Yeah. Do you know, the funny thing was, I, I was getting him off about 28 minutes, and Lindsay came off instead, and then Siwa ran back on. So he wasn't supposed to play all that time. Um, but he just got on with it and, and and he just kept going and then obviously I mean the bench tonight sort of I got questioned a little bit during the week um, about the size of our bench with Connor and Egan and Sammy Verrills coming on and, and that they're the ones that, that that impact that they had that's what got us the lead you know and then Egan's short pass to, to Siwa was exceptional um, and then just their work, the continuous work around there was uh, was great. They laid a platform for these guys to play off the back of. There's much to talk about Joey switch to the six. I think Joey John said during the coverage that's that's his best spot. I know it's hard. He started him tonight, but yep. thoughts on his performance before. Yeah, it was great. You know, and that's he did that off no training, um, coming off the New Zealand game. You know, he's practiced a little bit there before, but um, yeah, he just hasn't hasn't trained there at all um, but it's nice seeing those two run next to each other <coughs> as much as they do and just know how to play footy and um, any opportunities they, they play um, they look at the opposition they don't need to look sort of sideways to see what their teammates are doing because they expect them to be there they look at the opposition and any little cracks they'll take them on or they'll create them um, so having both Ted and, and Joe there was um, yeah, it was so enjoyable to watch and play. Uh, I answered that sort of yesterday that, you know, that's the plan, that, that, that that's what he's working towards. Uh, so he's back on some of his sort of progressions there to get towards that. So.